everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us. My name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating. Today we are going to be talking all about reptiles. So I thought I would bring a special guest to help me out today. So this is Smoke. She's a corn snake. She's about six or seven years old. We don't know her real birthday and she's about four to five feet long and she's really sweet. She's really calm. Um, she loves to come out and hang out with us. So she's going to help us a little bit today, but we are going to be talking all about reptiles, which are an amazing group of animals that live all over the world, except for Antarctica. And they've got a lot of really cool characteristics. Most people, when they picture a reptile, they think of something scaly or slithering, and you'd be right. Reptiles kind of all have scales. They all do some form of slithering. But something really cool about reptiles is they live in a bunch of really extreme environments. They live places where it's really, really hot or really, really cold or the environment is just really hard to live in. So they have adapted, they've developed these really awesome characteristics to help them live in those harsh environments. So we're gonna learn some of the things that make reptiles unique, but we're also gonna learn what makes a reptile a reptile. Reptiles are a really diverse group of animals that have four different groups inside the reptile group. So reptiles are composed of snakes, lizards, turtles and tortoises, and crocodiles, which also includes alligators. So those four different groups of animals, they look really different from one another, but they actually all have a lot in common. And one of those things that they all have in common is that they're cold-blooded. So for all animals, our bodies, they work better when they're at a specific temperature. So for people, our bodies work best at 98.6 degrees. And if our body temperatures are too high or too low, that could tell us that something's wrong. But we don't have to do anything to keep our body temperatures at 98.6. We don't have to go stand in the sun when we're cold. Sometimes when we are cold, we wear a blanket, but really for the most part, our bodies do all of that by themselves. <laughs> so something that reptiles do that's different than us is they can't control their body temperatures. When they're cold, they have to go out in the sun to warm up, and if they're too warm, they need to find somewhere to hide to cool down. So they have to go out and actively change their body temperature. So to warm up, they do something we call basking. They lay in the sun for a long period of time to get that body temperature higher and higher and higher. And then if they're too warm and they need to cool their body temperature down, they'll hide. They'll go underneath rocks or a big tree. They'll find somewhere where it's a little bit cooler. But something that's even crazier than that, so in some areas, it can be really cold for the whole winter or really hot for the whole summer. But in the winter, some reptiles, it's just too cold for them. There's not enough sun and they actually will sleep for the whole winter, kind of like a bear who hibernates. But for a reptile, we call it brumation. And these tortoises and the different lizards that do that in the desert, they, we don't see them for months. It's a really awesome thing that they do to help keep themselves alive during the colder seasons. Another really cool thing that reptiles all have in common is they all have bones. So just like you and me and other mammals and birds, if you guys bend your fingers, there's bones in there, they're nice and hard. If you reach around and you feel your backbone, your spine, that's a big bone. So when animals have bones, we give them a really special name. We call them vertebrates. Vertebrates means that these animals have bones, just like you and me. So you might not think of all reptiles as having bones. If you picture Smoke, the snake here, her bones probably look a little bit different than ours do. So instead, snakes down their really long body, they have a really long backbone that runs the entire length of their body. And if you guys feel here on your stomachs, we also have ribs and snakes have ribs that run all the way from their head down to their tail. But if you picture an animal like a turtle or a tortoise who has that hard shell on their back, 
You guys might think, well, do they even have bones? Do they need bones? They've got that hard shell to protect them and to provide them support, but actually turtles and tortoises do have bones. They've got bones that go into their legs and their feet, but actually their entire shell is made of a bony plate. And on the underside of their shell, their backbone, their spine, actually connects to the turtle's shell. So when you touch a turtle, it's got all of those bones running along the underside of its shell. They can actually feel your touch. So it's really amazing and they can do that because turtles and the rest of the reptile group are vertebrates. One of the first things you picture when you picture a reptile is probably all of their scales. Reptiles don't have skin like you and I have. Instead, they're covered in a bunch of scales. And these scales are made of keratin, which is the same thing as your fingernails and your hair and a bird's feather and a stingray barb and lots of other things in the animal kingdom. So these hard keratin scales are really helpful for these animals. So they provide a whole bunch of different services on something like an alligator, which has really large, thick, hard scales that acts as kind of an armor. It acts as protection for that animal in case something were to ever try to attack it. But some scales actually help the animals camouflage. They help them blend into their environment. Again, so if you're a little snake slithering along and there's a big bird, a hawk maybe, that thinks that a snake would be a tasty lunch, this, the hawk might not ever even be able to see you if you're blending in with your environment. And that way you don't have to try to outrun it or fight it, that way you never even get caught. Scales can also be used to help the animal move. So if you picture an animal like a snake, their whole body is not covered in the same shape or size scale. The scales on their belly are actually really long and wide, and that way, when they're slithering along the forest floor, they're not getting stuck on little rocks or twigs. Those large scales help them move a little bit easier. But something else that's really weird about these scales is that when you and I get bigger, our skin just stretches and we grow. But these scales, it doesn't really work like that. So reptiles, in order to grow, have to do something called shedding where they lose the outside part of their scales so that they can get a little bit bigger each time. So when you picture a snake, you might picture, I actually have an example here, you might picture something like this, which comes off all in one big piece. So you guys can see here, but on something like a lizard, the shed comes off in patches. So it's a little bit different for all of the animals, even on a turtle, their shells will actually shed as they're getting bigger. Those large portions of scales, the big ones, they come off in one whole big piece. So it's really awesome, but that is how lizards and snakes and other reptiles, as they get older, that is how they grow. So the last thing that we're gonna talk about that most reptiles have in common is that about 80% of reptiles lay eggs instead of having live babies. So you might picture a bird, but it's a little bit different. Reptile eggs are a little different. Instead of being hard, they're actually kind of soft. They're usually pretty small, and there's usually a bunch of them all together. They stick together. But unlike a bird who has to sit on the nest to keep the eggs warm, reptiles, a lot of them will just lay their eggs in a nice hidden area, like maybe in a burrow or under a pile of leaves where the eggs are a little bit protected but then they just leave and they don't come back. And there are a few reptiles who will stick around and check on the eggs, but it's not like birds where mom and dad will care for them for a really long time. It's usually they just lay the eggs and then they leave. But sometimes having babies for reptiles can be really weird. So we said about 80% of them lay eggs, but that other 20%, they actually have live babies. So rattlesnakes, they don't lay eggs. They actually give birth to teeny tiny little rattlesnakes. It's really, really weird. Something else that some reptiles do when they lay their eggs, whether the eggs turn out to be boys or girls actually depends on the temperature of the egg. 
So for an animal like a sea turtle, depending on if the climate, if the temperature is hot or cold, that will affect how many girls and how many boys hatch from those eggs. And lastly, and possibly the weirdest thing that reptiles do, is some of them can actually clone themselves. They can have babies without there even being a dad. So for the Komodo dragon, that mama Komodo dragon can have a bunch of babies without there ever being a dad. It is really, really weird. All right, you guys, before we wrap up here today, let's just do a quick little recap on the four things we learned that reptiles have in common. So our first one, remember, is that reptiles are cold-blooded. If they're cold and they need to warm up, they're gonna go outside and bask in the sun to get their body temperatures up. All reptiles are vertebrates. Remember, even Smoke here has a big spine running down the length of her body and all those teeny tiny ribs. All reptiles are covered in scales that help them move or camouflage or act as an armor. And lastly, about 80% of reptiles lay eggs. They have nice soft eggs that they'll have in a burrow or hidden under some leaves somewhere where they're kind of protected. All right, you guys, so Smoke and I are so happy that you were able to join us today for our reptiles class. If you want to learn more about snakes and lizards and other reptiles, you can check out some of the awesome resources on our educating website. And we're really looking forward to seeing you guys next time when we talk about amphibians.